Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Today we check out the Echo System from Empress FX. Let's get started. Today we're checking out the Echo System from Empress FX. It's just a super powerful delay system that does just about any type of echo and delay effect that you could possibly come up with. Everything from vintage style analog and tape to pristine digital delays to special effects delays to delays plus reverb. We actually have 42 different types and counting. They're adding new algorithms all the time inside this one box. And one of the beautiful things about it is there's no menu diving. Even though you can have up to 35 presets, there's no need to get into menus. You don't have to do much programming. Everything you need is really right here on the front panel. You can dial up your sounds, easily save and recall your presets from right here. Now there are some deeper functions, and we'll talk about some of those a little bit later, but they're also very easy to access. We also have all kinds of extended control capability. You can use an expression pedal with this. You could use an external tap tempo switch with this. You can control it via control voltage, or you can control virtually any parameter via MIDI. So it really can become the heart of your whole tonal and textural system with your guitar rig. So to begin, probably the first place to start is with some of the sounds that you can make with this box. And again, I mentioned everything from pristine digital delays to warm analog delays to tape delays to all types of special effects, reverse echoes, ping pong effects, all kinds of things. And that's all created by two engines that actually live inside the box. And you can organize those in four ways. You can use a single engine. You can use a dual engine in parallel, which means you have an effect running side by side basically at the same time. And they can have completely independent settings. You can also set up those two engines in series where one feeds into the other. And again, they can have completely separate independent settings. And finally, you can split them left and right to create a wide stereo effect, again, with totally separate independent settings on each of those delay engines. Now all this can be saved into up to 35 presets, or you can use the front panel as the active control is really giving you 36 different sounds to choose from at any given time. Scrolling through those presets is very simple. Just hit the button. As you can see, the lights indicate by color and the number of lights that are illuminated what preset you're actually on. When they all flash like this, if you select, you're now active on the front panel. So let's start there. Now we have 12 different echo modes here, digital, tape, analog, multi, which is like a space echo with multiple tape heads, modulated, filtered delay effects, ambient delay effects, delay plus reverb. We also have a reverse, stutter, lo-fi. Our final mode is whiskey, which are sort of those unclassifiable types of delays. Now underneath each of those modes, we can have multiple sub-modes, if you will, or multiple algorithms. For example, if we start with digital, we've got the original pristine delay. But if we turn the mode knob, the light here turns green, indicating we're at one of the sub-modes. In this case, we're at the short 80s, which is sort of emulating those lexicon effects from the 1980s. If we turn again, the light turns red, and now we have a ping-pong algorithm. We have three different ways we can set the delay time for each of these algorithms. We can use what's called local tap tempo, which means we tap the tempo button, and that tempo is actually saved with each of the presets. So as you call up a preset, the tempo will change along with it. We can also change this to where it functions as a global tap tempo. So this basically means the tap tempo is active all the time, no matter what preset you're on. And finally, we can also set the tempo using a knob as well by turning that. The delay time knob allows us to dial up a particular subdivision within that tap tempo. So if we turn all the way this way, So 
So you notice the tap tempo indicator stays at the same tempo, but our subdivision within that is changing as we rotate that knob. Let's put that back to 12 o'clock. We also, of course, have a blend or mix control that sets everything from 100% dry to 100% wet. We'll put that back to about 50%. We have an output control that sets the overall output level for the pedal. Feedback determines the number of repeats. The tone control allows you to shape the top end of the sound, but it's also used for some other parameters as well, depending on the different algorithm that you might have dialed up. Thing one and two are two parameter controls, and their function changes depending on which algorithm you're using. In some cases, it might be, for example, modulation depth. In another case, it might be uh, uh, modulation speed. It might be a variety of other different parameters as well. It really depends on the algorithm that you have dialed up. So for example, with this particular algorithm, which is our ping pong algorithm, this sets our modulation depth, and this sets our speed. So having that array of controls gives you access to everything you need to shape your sounds right there on the front panel. When you're ready to save, you simply choose a preset and hit the save button. Now there are two ways we can move through presets. I showed you how we can scroll by just hitting the scroll button. We can also scroll backward by hitting the tap and the scroll button at the same time. Hit tap to select a preset and then whichever one you're on where you want to save your preset, hit shift. But it goes beyond that. There are actually two modes for presets. You can scroll through them directly, 0 through 35, as I'm doing here, or you can actually set them up in banks as well, and you can determine the number of presets you want to have either in your scrolling list or in your bank list. Getting back to our algorithms, if we turn the mode control again, this turns yellow, and we're now on the dynamic ducking algorithm. And in this case, while you're playing, the uh, level of the delay will be turned down so it doesn't clutter up the sound. It keeps things clean. When you stop playing, the delay will come up to fill the gaps in between. That can make for a very expressive delay, but your mix still stays nice and clean. Now if we dial again, we get a variation that's called ducking feedback, and in this case the amount of feedback is cut while you're playing, and it comes up when you stop playing. So you get the idea, there's a lot of different variations here. If we go to tape, we have a number of different analog tape style delays. And we have control over modulation. We have a number of different tape algorithms. Now if we scroll down, we can also select analog algorithms. Again, we have several different types. This is bucket brigade delay, which would be a traditional old style or a vintage style analog delay. And we actually have control over saturation and modulation using thing one and thing two. So thing one is gonna bring up the saturation and the effect. we can add modulation as well. Our next category is multi, which refers to multi-tap delays. Now these are delays that are going to break up the delay into multiple shorter delays. <laughs> Now we have it control over intensity here, and also of depth and pan width here. We have three different types of modulated delays. First up, we have a panning delay. We can set the pan width as well as the depth. You can hear it sort of pulling off to one side as the delay repeats there. Our next mode is trem delay. In 
that case, the tremolo effect is just being applied to the delay repeats. It's not on the dry signal. Our third modulated delay is waveform delay. The next mode is filter, and again we have multiple types of filter delays. Ambient delays give us big, rich textural sounds. Some of them swell in and out of the repeats. The final algorithm under ambient is called freezification, and it allows you to sustain a chord or a note and then play over the top of it. So if we scroll to the purple delay type here. Next mode is delay plus reverb. In this case, thing one controls the mix of delay and reverb. Thing 2 sets the reverb decay time. Moving to the next mode, we have reverse delay types. Let's set these back up to 12 o'clock. There are different types here as well. The next algorithm has pitch shifting on the reverse delays. And the final type does a triggered reverse delay. Stutter echoes allow you to create some very interesting textures. The third stutter algorithm is called granular, and it's very interesting because it allows you to chop your sound up into fine little grains of audio. Now you can hold the tap switch to actually sustain one of those. You have control over grain density using the tone control, grain size with thing one, and then there is the randomness that is applied to all of this with thing two. So let's turn thing two down. Let's set that about the middle. Let's see what we can do here. We'll go to the third algorithm.
all kinds of crazy effects are available there. I, mean, I could just sit there and play with that all day long because there's so many interesting things happening. Two more modes to go. The first of those is lo-fi, which gives you lo-fi echo effects. You can also get robot type effects. as well as distorted swells. Our last mode is whiskey mode. Again, that's those sort of unclassifiable uh, echo effects that we have there. The first is called Knobs Seesaw. What you have there are two independent delays with different pitch shift amounts, and as you trigger over the threshold, it'll be routed into those two delays and you get the different effects combined together. final whiskey mode is shimmery fixed pitch shift. So again, using pitch shifting on those different delay lines. An interesting feature of the echo system is it actually has a multi-track looper built in. And we turn that on by holding the scroll and the bypass switches for one second. We see the blue light comes on. And now our tap switch actually becomes a record overdub switch. Bypass becomes our start stop or our play stop switch. We can mute the active track by hitting the scroll switch, and we can move to the next track here and overdub on top. It's a very cool way to create loops on the fly. You can control it all with your feet. You can have up to 10 minutes of looping time on board. You can move among the tracks. You can mute tracks as you saw there. We can clear tracks out. We can clear all tracks to do that. We simply move to a empty track. And now I believe we hold these and we clear things out. And to exit, we hold scroll and bypass again. Blue light goes off and we're back to our normal operation. As I mentioned, we've got a variety of extended features inside here as well. We have stereo inputs and outputs, and those can be set up for mono in and out, or there's actually a hardware insert mode where you plug into the left input, you come out of the left output to feed into your amplifier and the right in and out become a loop that you can use for an external pedal for processing the delay tail. There are even things in here like cabinet simulation. There are some EQ curves, or three of them actually, that allow you to plug in without an amplifier and get a sound as if you're playing through a cabinet. That's a very cool feature to make a quick demo recording or if you're practicing. To access some of these features, you go into what's called advanced configuration mode. To do that, you hold the tap and the bypass switch and hit the shift button flashes twice and now we're in that configuration mode we can do things like set up how our preset scrolling is working we can access that hardware bypass mode we can enable and disable the looper function if we want to use it or if we don't want to use it and there are a variety of other sort of set them and forget them parameters that are available in that advanced configuration place now if we hold those two buttons again we get the yellow flash twice the pedal will reboot and we're back to normal operation I hope you've enjoyed this look at the ecosystem from Empress Effects. We've really just scratched the very surface of what this delay pedal can do. It's so powerful. There are so many algorithms in there, so many different tonal possibilities. If you're into ambient sounds, if you're into textures, there's a ton of things in there for you. But even if you just want a quick slapback delay, that's in there as well. It covers the full range of delay effects. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater.
Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Click here for more videos like this, or start at Sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs.